me, what I've always been struck by, we at our clinic, we have patients complete a very long list of scales and metrics. And what I'm quite struck by is the patients who are apparently in remission and apparently they are recovered from their depression, at least according to our metrics, yet their satisfaction with treatment is rated very low. And these are people who are not even having adverse events in terms of sexual dysfunction. Some are, of course, but this isn't accounting for that. There's a, there's a, a general dissatisfaction. And then a, a, really a discussion around that I find illuminating because what I discovered many times over is that there is a slight disconnect between what the desired and what the actual object objectives were that were, were actually uh, uh, met. And uh, what does the person look like? Well, there's not one phenotype, uh, but what I have also discovered is that these are the types of people, for example, with depression, who come to me looking for psychostimulants. They're looking for norepinephrine drugs. They're people who are often engaging in drugs and alcohol. Now, it's my argument that people who engage in those behaviors, by definition, are disengaged. That's not my message. My message is, is this is often a proxy of something else going on here with respect to a sense of vitality and a sense of uh, experience and a sense of uh, positive valence that they're just not experiencing. And what's interesting about that for me is, you know, the New York Times made the word lassitude the word of COVID-19. And what the modal patient is in my clinic who has disengagement but has fully remitted is the patient who really presents with lassitude. And that is, is that futuristically, they don't feel they have much to look forward to. There's a certain kind of apathy about their existence. And it's ubiquitous. And they often try to remedy this in often very maladaptive ways. And I know what I'm describing is very, very common in everyday clinical practice.